Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? I hope y'all are smiling because God woke you up. God brought you to his house. He got plenty of blessings for you. So y'all should be just smiling. I should see nothing but teeth and lips just piled out this way. <laughs> but, but I, I just on uh, another note, I just want to let you know that Pastor wasn't feeling good. He just had a little bit of pain, so we dropped him off at the doctor, and they were doing an EKG on him. But we know he's going to be all right because we're going to lift him up in prayer. And uh, there was another man, uh, so, uh, we're talking about uh, David Pites. Him and his wife got that COVID, and they're on respirator right now. So we're going to we're going to open up in prayer and. Give it to the Lord today. Let's pray. Dear kind, heavenly, gracious, loving, sweet Father of ours, please forgive us of our sin. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you with a heavy heart. Dear Heavenly Father, we just we just ask you to touch those who are sick and afflicted. Dear Heavenly Father, need that special touch. That David Pites, the one that's got the COVID and his wife, we just ask a special blessing upon him that you'll get him off that respirator, dear Heavenly Father, and get him back breathing on their own. And dear Heavenly Father, our pastor, Mike Garner, we just ask you to put your hand upon him, dear Heavenly Father, minister to him and heal him as he was having a little bit of pain in his chest, dear Heavenly Father. We know you're going to take care of that, dear Heavenly Father, because we're going to leave it to you because we, we can't do nothing about it, but we know who can, dear Heavenly Father. That's why we're giving it to our Lord and Savior. And dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy you give us every day. And I just ask you to be with each and every person here, dear Heavenly Father. Just let the Holy Spirit dwell in this house. Go up and down each one of the pews, dear Heavenly Father, and, and just minister to them. Just touch them and bless them, dear Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for everything you've done for us, all your blessings you've bestowed upon us, dear Heavenly Father, for getting us up this morning and let's, letting us be to come to your house, dear Heavenly Father, and praise you, dear Heavenly Father, without being persecuted, without having to worry about no one bothering us or, or telling us we can't do it, dear Heavenly Father. We know that because we're going to praise our Father, the one that gave us life, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, just be with this service today. Dear Heavenly Father, it's going to be a little different than what we're used to, dear Heavenly Father, but as long as you're in the midst and it's, it's you that we're talking and praising, this is going to go fine, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son who went to that cross at Calvary and shed his precious blood to cover our sins. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for what he went through for us, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, there's a person out here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. I hope today's going to be the day that they find you as Lord and Savior, dear Heavenly Father. They won't leave this church, dear Heavenly Father, without knowing you because we never know when our time's going to be up. So I hope they're right right now. And we're going to give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything said and done today. In Jesus' sweet and holy name we pray. Amen. All right, the choir's going to. No, uh, you want to do the congregation first or the, let the choir do the first song? Let, let them all get a yeah, yeah, there you go. I think everybody's going to sleep today. There you go.
sounds like a rebel. Do another song. I thought y'all would be on page 19. Hey, make you keep getting up, but why you up? Just, let's, let's do that shit slow. Let's, yeah. If I can have the ushers come on up, we'll go ahead and do the ties. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Lord, we just thank you for your spirit that we felt, Lord. We just ask you to be with our pastor as he's at the emergency room right now. Lord, we just ask that you lift him up, Lord, and that you touch him. And, Lord, this morning, the offering it received, Lord, we just ask that it be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. But most of all, Lord, Lord, we just ask you to call somebody out today, Lord, to come out from among them, Lord, so that you can be Savior of their life, Lord. And we just, we just thank you for all that you do for us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
children want to bring their, their offering up. Now, this is when it should have put a smile on your face. Watch all these little kids just run up, put their money in there. Children's Church, if y'all want to go ahead and, oh, well, let me, you want me to read the bulletin first before y'all go? Did y'all hear what, it, oh, y'all kids can go ahead. I don't think y'all really care about the bulletin anyway. Huh? A lot of people don't anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, just remember, uh, we got a business meeting August 18th at 7 p.m., so y'all please be here. We're going to adopt a budget for the, this coming year, and elect the officers and the teachers, so. If you want your voice heard, make sure you come. August the 29th, which is the fifth Sunday of the month, we're going to have a movie. And I'm not sure what the movie is, but it's going to be a good movie. Or we wouldn't show it. And I think that they're having an association event, August 16th, town hall meeting at a, a, the Feast of Baptist, Baptist Church, September. Remember, September 18th, they're going to have that annual blast and cast. I don't know if any of y'all been there, but it's, it's pretty fun. You'll have a lot of fun going there. Take your kids. And uh, Marty, glad to see you. How's that new baby? I just saw him walk through. How's that? Okay, I see you ran out of the house real quick. Let Mom take care of it. Good man, good man. <laughs> well, look, this is something different, y'all, because uh, this is just short notice, and I, I really don't have a lot of words, but I, I do want to give a testimony. Because, you know, anybody else, please stand up because this will be testimony day because to let people know what the Lord has done for you and what it might do for somebody else because he pulled me through a lot. You know, I did my drugs and alcohol in this world. I, I was trying to be in this world, thought I'd be real cool and everything, but you're not. You think you're hurting, you're hurting nobody, but, but you are. When you do stuff you're not supposed to, you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your family, your friends. And if you'll notice people that do that, they walk around with their head down because they can't look at you in the eye. They can't face you because they're really ashamed of it, but yet they, they think it's good to do. But I was glad that my Lord and Savior took me away from it, took the taste away from me. I don't have no more desire. I don't, I don't care nothing about it. And I kind of feel bad that I even did do it. But uh, I'm telling you, our, our, God, is, our God is great because we all go through some t tough times. I know we... we, we this month, the end of this month is going to be the, our son will be passed away five years. And uh, that was probably the toughest thing we ever went through as a mother and a father. But, uh, you know, we had to keep our faith because we don't understand why. We want to ask all these questions. We want answers because we don't understand it. It breaks our heart. But, you know, we think that everything we got is ours. But, you know, God's the one that gave it to us. God gives us everything we have, everything we've got. We're not going to take it with us. We're not going to carry it with us. He knew, he knew me before I was born. He knew the parents I was going to have. He knew the wife I was going to take. He even knew the children I was going to have, the friends. He knows everything. He knows, I think, you know, when I, before I was really just blessed and saved, you know, I thought everything I had, I worked for it. I got it. It's mine. But it ain't. God's the one that gave me the skills. God's the one that gave me everything I've got and what to do. He's, he's led me through the way and, but I just didn't know it until, I, you know, when I wasn't saved, I didn't know it. I was just following the path like everybody does with your friends and of the flesh. But I was glad that he took that away from me. And now I'm just giving everything up to him. And uh, it still breaks our hearts. We still cry. We still have our moments. But we, we can't lose that faith in God. Because, I mean, you know, it's just we, we want to blame a lot of things. But, you know, that's, that's to me, that's just the devil. When we start hurting and we start hating and we're discouraged. That's just a wedge that the devil puts in you to get you away from the Lord. To, you know, and uh, I used to think, you know, hey, you can always look over your shoulder and someone's got it a little worse than you do. Or when something like that happens to you, you don't feel that away. You think you, you're, you're the worst that can happen. But, you know, the, the, the book that helped me a lot was, was the book of Job. Look what that man had. Look what he had. He had everything. And the devil took it all away from him. He lost his family, all his kids. 
He lost his livestock. He lost everything he owned. He was eat up with sores. His wife even said, curse God and let him die. But look at faith that man had. If I could be his big half that way, I, I, know, I don't know if I could because that situation ain't never come to me, but to have the faith that Job did in his Lord and Savior, to not to give up, to keep on, to keep on, and for what he got back in return. Yeah, it was great. You'd still love to have what you lost, but, man, that's a lot of faith. And I, I just wonder if we do, we have a little bit of that faith ourselves. I know as Christians, we go out and we tell people, yeah, I got faith, and, you know, this, that, but do you really? You know, because you need to walk the walk and talk the talk if you're going to do it. You need to let people know that you do, and you need to act on it. The same way when you tell people, yeah, I'll help you, and you don't really mean it. You avoid them some. You know, we're supposed to, the same way with love, we're supposed to love one another, help each other out. And when I love you, we, all, we use that word a lot loosely. We just come some say, hey, I love you. But do you really mean it? And, and people say, you know, there's different types of love. I didn't see it in the Bible. God just said he loved everybody, and we should love everybody the same way. You know, we shouldn't have a different love for one thing or another. Love should be great. You should love someone with your, your whole heart, not just a word just to be saying to quiet somebody up or get them to move on. You know, when we say that, we should mean it. And uh, I just, I just, I thank the Lord every day for my Lord and Savior for what he's pulled me through and what he's given me and my wife and my daughter because we nearly lost her too. And, man, I'm telling you, you can get a lot of questions going, a lot of, Lord, why? Do you hate me? Did I do something wrong? What did I do to deserve this? Well, that, that's part of life. I don't know why. I, I can't explain it. I'll never. I always want to know why, but I don't know if I'll ever get an answer because I imagine when I get up to heaven, I'm just going to be happy and just, I know that if I see them, that I'm going to have eternity with them. Not that it's this short period of time that I had with them on earth, which is very short. We don't have very long here at all. But we know that when we get to heaven, we're going to have eternity. And I, I was asking the pastor today about, you know, and I, I talked to Buddy about it today, the other day. And, you know, when we get to heaven, and he says that we'll know them. But will we know them like we do down here and want to run up? I know I, I just want got urge, I just want to run up and grab and hug them and love them and tell them how much I miss them and everything. But I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But I'm going to tell you, I'm just, just grateful for my Lord and Savior and for all y'all here and for your lifting up and your prayers. And, you know, I just hope y'all mean when you say something, that, you know, make sure you mean it because it goes a long way. And, uh, Anybody else have a testimony that they want to give? I'll give you the mic because, well, they, they want to, well, they want to register it on the, be able to, but yes, ma'am, please. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. I am a PK, if you know what a PK is, preacher's kid. And my younger life in church, I was, my parents were very strict on me, very strict. I didn't go to dances. I didn't curl my hair. I didn't wear makeup. I didn't have a first date till I was 18. So when I left home with my little bag, the day after my 18th birthday, I decided I was going to see the world. Well, I saw it in the wrong way. Did a lot of things I shouldn't have done. But then God knocked on the door a second time and says, don't you want to come home, Gladys? And I fell to my knees and said, yes, Lord, please. So I'm back in the house again. I'm back with the Lord again. And I found this little church. I love it dearly. Thank you. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I know you don't know me, but uh, my name is Paul Castillo. And um, actually, North Carolina is a, a special place in, in my heart. Matter of fact, uh, my daughter, Megan, I wanted to name her Carolina, uh, but everybody would think it was the um, basketball team or the college, so her middle name is Carolina. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? Uh, not a whole lot, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, August the 1st was a very special day for me. Uh, number one, it was celebrating my 29th anniversary uh, to my beloved bride, Lenore. And the second thing, it was um, my official retirement from the United States Air Force after 39 and a half years. Now, that's, that's, that's not the testimony part here. Um, the testimony is the fact that um, I did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And on February the 15th, 1990, uh, I finally got to the point where um, I was afraid of living because I had no idea what the future held. 
and I was afraid of dying because I had no idea where I was going. <clears throat> so I remember getting up, looking in the mirror, and, uh, and realizing that uh, something was desperately wrong with me. And um, I went, went to the base. Back then, I was a, I was a sergeant and, um, and said, hey, this, this happened. And uh, I was just basically ignored because spiritual things are spiritually discerned, right? So when you're talking about your lostness and you don't even under, know that you're lost and you, under, you don't understand that the problem that, that's going on with you is sin and the influence of sin in your life and sin in the world because that's the, the reality that we face Oftentimes what I see is people want to put one arm around Jesus and they want to put one arm around the world. And they want the privileges and benefits of both, but the reality is that you have to let go of what you perceive as treasure and is really trash in order to embrace the Savior. So I got down on my knees and I said this. I said, God, if there is a God, I'm not worthy to be here. I was in a chapel at the base. I said, I'm not worthy to be here. But if you make this feeling go away, I will do anything, anything that you tell me. And I knew it was God that showed up because a crystal clear thought came into my mind. And this is what God said. Love me and serve me unconditionally. Now, I want to repeat that to each and every one of you because the reality is sometimes we want what we want. We want what we want, and when God is not performing to our expectation, it is so easy. It is so easy. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't want to come to church this morning. I just didn't feel like it. But you know what? My brother and I, we looked at each other and said, our God is worthy. He is worthy of praise and adoration, and it's, it's, it's a shame that your pastor is, is at the hospital. I mean, that's a shame, but it's a reminder, right, that we're supposed to be looking to the Savior. We're supposed to be looking to the Savior. And if you, uh, when I'm up on, on the, on the, in the pulpit, because I retired as a military chaplain, I was ordained, uh, believe it or not, I grew up Roman Catholic, but I was ordained as a Southern Baptist minister. I may not look at it. I don't know what you think a Southern Baptist minister is supposed to look like, so stop judging, okay? For all of you tall people, stop looking down. But what I'm trying to share with you and say this to, to you is that you are blessed and highly favored whether you recognize it. Amen. And sometimes we can get into the routines of life. But I tell you, I've lived all over the world. I've done three tours in Afghanistan. But there, the Holy Spirit is with you wherever you go. Amen. And listen, even if I don't, you know, my brother said, are you ready to preach today? I said, you know what, if I have to. But here's what I'll share with each and every one of you. Because the story is a long one. It really is. And it, it's a... It's one that, that God receives and deserves all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. Because, you know, when he saved me gloriously, then I witnessed to my brother and he got saved. Amen. And I want to ask you before I forget, because this is the most important thing. The reason that I came here is um, I want you to pray for my father. His name is Ray. Okay? Uh, pray for Ray. Uh, because I want to share the gospel with him, and I've tried many, 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 many times, but I'm not his pastor, I'm not his priest, I'm his son. But I'm going to tell you this, I led his mother, my grandmother, to the Lord on her deathbed. I remember just say, simply saying to her, Grandma, do you know where you're going to go when you die? And she says, no, no, son, I don't. And I said, may I tell you what the Bible says? And so I took her through the Romans road, and I said, you know, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And she says, yes, all have sinned. And then I went on and read, and I said, you know, uh, it's not by, it's by grace that we're saved, not by works, so that no one goes. She goes, we're saved by grace. Amen. And I said, Grandma, do you want to pray with me so that you know, that you know, that you know, that you're going to be with your Lord and Savior Jesus? So what I'm hoping to say to him to my father, say, if you want to be reunited with your mother, let me share with you what she did so that you know that you'll be, be together. Amen. I know that sounds just pray because my father says every morning, I, I pray for you, son, but it reminds me of the scripture, a form of godliness, yet denying its power, right? It's easy to say that we love each other 
and you know your neighbor. But the true test when I come into church is if people are friendly to the stranger. Because I want to tell you, I've been to some Baptist churches where I was clean shaven and, and I was much thinner before COVID, by the way, so don't judge. COVID did not put that fork in my mouth. I did that. But I've been in churches, Baptist churches before, um, and nobody talked to me. Nobody said hello. Nobody said anything. So I thought, well, wait a minute. The real spiritual Baptist comes Sunday night. So I'll come back, right? And nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. You never know where your neighbor or that stranger that comes in, where they're at spiritually. You have no idea. Maybe it's, it's I, I, I'm going to go try to go to church, and if nobody says anything, then I'm going to go home and kill myself. You, I, I'm not saying that to guilt you. I'm telling you that there are people out, out there like that, and I've heard their testimony where they said, I'm going to go, and if nobody says anything to me, and fortunately, that saint stepped up and said, how are you doing today? And really meant it. And turned around and saved their lives. Well, now I, I still, in ministry, you don't, you don't retire, right? It's just whether you get paid or not. So my current ministry is with the Veterans Administration. And so please pray for that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I live in Wichita, Kansas. Not everybody can live in the Holy Land, you know. This is actually, it's wonderful because people still let you talk about Jesus and they don't seem to get bent out of shape. So I just want to say thank you for this opportunity today. And if you don't know what to do, if you're looking for the checklist, if you're looking for the roadmap, I always remember, no matter what's going on in my Micah 6, 8, he has shown the old man what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to act justly and to love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. So thank you and God bless you. Thank Amen. you so much. Uh, I've been saved 54 years. And um, I, I've been hot, cold, lukewarm, everywhere, all over the map in them years. And uh, I don't know how many people can relate to that. But um, when I got saved, the Lord did something. He, uh, he showed me that I, he reimbursed what, what happened when I got saved. I got saved on a Thursday night. I got up Sunday morning and said, I want to go to church. I was 28 years old. had never been in church in my life. Uh other than just hitting a miss and following an old, old gal around, you know. But uh, uh, but I wanted to go to church. I didn't. That was something. I re, that was something to me. He, he revealed to me, you're different. You changed, you know. And uh, cause I hated preachers. I hated them long-winded preachers. Thought they'd never shut up, you know. And and. From that day on, I have loved preaching. I love the Word of God. I love Sunday school teachers that are teach the Word of God. And I don't understand Christians that don't love to the, the hear the Word of God taught. I don't understand that at all. But I've been consistent in my church going through a divorce, bad times, good times, everything else. I've been consistent in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night all 54, 52, 54 years or something, okay? And I don't understand people that don't want to hear the Word of God taught and preached. And they say, oh, yeah, I'm saved, but I don't want to hear no preaching. Don't want to hear no teaching. I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. Uh, another thing he did to me, he confirmed what what something and I was different. I had a filthy mouth, and I had a outstanding. I never seen anybody had the memory that I had. I had a super duper memory. I could tell filthy jokes all day long and not repeat one. And he took all that away. And and then it was about. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, 
you know, I got a, a good super memory and I got a filthy mouth and you need to clean it up. And uh, I can't do it by myself. You're going to have to clean this filthy mouth up. And about three weeks later, he slapped me upside the head and said, have you had any problems? Will you fill them out? <laughs> he took it. Instantly took that. I'm not telling you you've got a bad problem, and he's going to instantly take it away. You might have to work on it a long time. But he took that filthy mouth. He can't use a Christian with a filthy mouth. I don't believe he can. And he took that thing instantly away from me. And, uh, but I'm thinking about the, the, the song that they playing a lot right now is, He Didn't Leave Me, leave me Where He Found Me. They're playing it all over the radios right now. Beautiful song. Thank God He Didn't Leave Me Where He Found Me. Well, that, that kind of means that you lost half your vocabulary then, didn't it? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to thank the Lord for my salvation. Um, my faith is probably the strongest it's ever been in my entire life. And he has seen me through so much. I just hit my <clears throat> third year cancer free and I <laughs> and I give him total thanks for his healing. Uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer, um, I never once was afraid. I never once cried. I never missed a beat. Um, I went through two surgeries and my treatment and I knew the whole time that I was going to be fine. I knew that he, and I'd always say, he's got my back. And he did have my back. And even if it would have turned out different, I knew I still was going to be fine either way. I just cannot give enough thanks every day in my life for what he's given me. Uh, I have wonderful children. I am so blessed and beautiful grandchildren. I have brothers and sisters that I love dearly. Um, and I just lost a brother four months ago to COVID. He, he was on a respirator for uh, seven weeks, and he fought hard, and he was a good Christian man. But the point of it is that we couldn't see him. None of us could go see him, and uh, so we didn't get to say goodbye personally. And it was hard, and it's still hard. His son, at the end, did get to go in the last couple of days. But my point on that is, you never know when somebody's going to be called home. Whether it's a family member or a friend. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with them all the time. That's just the way life is. You're not going to. What you need to do is love each other. And if you step on each other's toes, get over it Amen. as quick as you can. Because I'm not kidding. Life is precious. And I got to say, when I got cancer, it totally, even though my faith was strong, it totally changed my whole outlook on life. So... And I got to say, too, with my brothers and sisters, we didn't always get along. And we, in, in past years, we stepped on each other's toes a lot and would hold grudges. And I, this took me the longest time, I would try to fix it. Let's, you know, let's go to church. Let's not be mad. You can't fix it. That was the hardest thing for me to learn, no matter how many times I went to the altar and asked, well, Lord, tell me what to do. It wasn't for me to do. 
He fixed it. He finally fixed it in his time, not my time. And so we're all we're all much closer now. And so um, my main thing is take the time and appreciate everything that you have, no matter how big, no matter how small. Be thankful, give, love one another. Take the time to sit down and be silent. Be silent and feel the Lord's presence and give him thanks because he deserves 100% of, of thanks for everything in your life. So put your faith where it belongs. Put your faith in him 100% and not what the earthly goods have to give you because that's going to get you nowhere. Put your faith in the Lord and you'll be just fine. And I got to say, this church is an amazing church. It's an amazing church with wonderful people. And we have a wonderful pastor now that is just so loving and so giving. And we all need to support him 100% as well as each other. So um, give thanks and be grateful for the man above. Anybody else? And like you said, our time ain't right anyway. His time is on time. He's always been on time. It doesn't matter when it happens, it's on time. Because we want everything in a hurry. We want it right now, and he knows that that ain't right for us. We're not ready for it now. Is anybody else? I just want to say I thank the Lord for saving me. I've, I've been through um, some different things in my life, and but the hardest thing seems like is my son is in the military. He's been in there about 12 years. He's got two boys, um, Liam's seven, and James is probably about six now. Um, we've seen him. We've seen Liam's, well, I've seen Liam twice and James once. And Roger's seen Liam once and James once. And they just had another little boy this week. Praise the Lord for that because uh, he was turned wrong and they had to take him by C-section. But he weighed eight pounds and three ounces. So he was a big boy. But uh, it's hard when you don't get to see your kids. You don't get to see your grandkids. Um, we have to put them in God's hands. We know that, I mean, you know, we have to pray that God can take care of them because they're God's children anyway. They're not ours. I feel like sometimes we're just a vessel. We have them, but they're God's. I can't watch over Justin. I can't watch over his life. I can't watch over Elizabeth, the boys, but God can. Amen. And I just... Pray that one day he will bring them back where we can see them. Because, you know, you think about God and he's got all of us to watch over. How does he do it? You know? He's an amazing person. Amen. And I just want to thank him. I want to thank him for my job. I know I tell Roger all the time, gosh, I've got to go to work again. You know? I'm just clear. That's what I say. But, you know, on my job, I go in at 5 o'clock in the morning. Most people don't come in till 8. I have a chance to have my radio on, on my Christian music, and that's my time with God. So I just want to thank you, because I don't thank him enough for that time and my family and my life that he's gave to me. You know I got to stand up and say something. Um, say it, brother. Whew. Speak. Mm. God is good. Whew. That's so good to me. I don't deserve it. You all know I don't. I've lived a terrible life for a lot of years, a lot of years, 
I was on the road wrestling, and I went to working for Dwayne Johnson. Y'all know that whole story. And uh, that lifestyle was just crazy and wild and drinking and partying and women and just all that all the time. I was horrible. Horrible. And I should have been dead two or three times. I should have been dead. I really should have. But the Lord spared me. And I always wondered what that was for. And uh, I had a wreck right below Mom's house one night. And um, she thought it was thundering outside. She got up and looked out the window and thought she heard a thunderclap. It was my truck flipping over. And I always thought, what if I'd have died that night and she'd have had to drive down that road every day and know her son died right there below her house because I was out drinking and partying. I had 40 UIs in my lifetime. <laughs> Finally decided I need to quit drinking after four DUIs. Very stubborn. My brother Scott and Dennis and Mama and everybody was worried about me. And uh, Mama prayed all these years. She prayed for me. And guess what? God answers prayer. He answers prayer. And, um, but... You know, now I see my life is a little different than most people. I'm 53 years old and just had a baby. Well, I didn't have it. My wife did. But um, still showing. But science. But people nowadays will tell you a man can have a baby, <laughs> and and, and they can't. Let me just go ahead and affirm that they cannot have a baby, and there are not 118 different types of uh, of genders. There's two, a man and a woman. Amen. Don't don't be confused, Amen. please. Um, but you know. Uh, I was listening to my brother over here, the, the pastor, and I was like, man, I, I knew you was a pastor when you stood up and started talking. You were just so confident in the things you were coming out of your mouth. I said, that guy has to be a preacher because he wasn't scared of the, of the mic. He just took it and ran with it. But, you know, I, a lot of people think, you know, well, I'm going to pray about this. I'm going to pray about that. If you don't know the Lord, he ain't hear nothing you're saying. That's right. He ain't going to hear nothing from you but a sinner's prayer. That's when he hears your prayer. You know, it's like somebody said a while back, and I, I thought this made a lot of sense. You know, they said, I'm going to go to the White House. I'm going to go up to the White House and, and get in. I'm going to go in the White House because I know the president. You can't get in the White House just because you know the president. The president's got to know you. So the Lord's got to know you. You can't just know the Lord. You know, I've heard people say, are you a, uh, are you a believer? No, I'm a follower, not just a believer. The devil's a believer of the Lord. But you got to follow the Lord. Amen. You got to be a disciple. You got to learn. You got to you got to grow. Um, but I just want to say thank you to the Lord for everything He's put in my life, man. My life got turned around when I turned. I started coming over here, and I met Erica. And we got together. We had Kensington about five and a half years ago. And um, don't worry, Erica's not fifty-three. <laughs> Erica's thirty-three. All right. I know what you're thinking. Oh, my goodness. But, no, the Lord put that together because I tried to get out of it and tell her she didn't need me. And uh, she wouldn't have it. She wouldn't have that. And I thank God for that because God will give you the, the desires of your heart. Uh, the Lord will do that for you. And um, But, anyway, we had Kensington five and a half years ago, and we just had another little baby about, um, when was it? It was August the 5th. It was Thursday morning at 618. And uh, so... You know, my life's a little different, but I know the Lord's in it. And I said, if the Lord's in it, I'm going to run with it. it can't, I can't go wrong. Amen. And uh, so y'all just pray for us as we're on this journey. And we thank everybody for all your cards and all your support and all the little baby shower gifts. Thank you so much. And uh, we love all of y'all. And we're just going to move forward with this church. And our church is, I think, it's on fire right now. We're just going to keep getting stronger. I want people all over this nation to start seeing this smoke coming from Carthage, North Carolina. Amen. And it's us. And we want to build that fire. We want to have that fire over here and, and just build it into a big revival and let it spread all over the nation. Why can't it start here? It can start here. It starts with you, first of all. And then it starts with the church. It goes with, to the church. Then it goes to the county, the state, then the nation, then the world. Let's spread Jesus' love all over this world because that's what it's all about anyway. And I love y'all. Thank you. Amen. All right. And uh, two things. Marty, make sure that that was love and not she just wanted to get out of the house because she was living with her mom and daddy. And Renee, that baby wasn't turned the wrong way. 
That baby just wanted to be dropped on his feet so he could take off running because I was dropped on my head. Look how I turned out. So <laughs> might be better to be dropped on your feet than your head. So. <laughs> okay, yes. Give it to her. So I just want to praise God. Um, had a, I've had a lot of problems with my family, um, with my kids. Um, lost a lot. And um, I just want to praise God. The past three, four months, he's really, really worked in our lives. And I just can't be grateful enough. And I just want to give all the praise back to him because he's really been good to us. And I um, just want to say thank you, God, and I love you. Anybody else? All right. Hello, y'all. My name's Shannon, and I asked the church to pray for my mother-in-law, and she has five spots of cancer on her. My father was coming to see me, and he called me, and he told me, he said, son, I'm not going to be able to make it. I said, Dad, you're where you need to be. And he told me what his wife was going through, and uh, they took her to the clinic, and she got five spots of cancer on her, and I said, well, you stay where you're at, and we'll be fine. Well... I come to church and I ask y'all to pray for me. And my mother-in-law is doing well. All of her spots are 90% healed. And I'd like to give a praise report. And I thank you and thank you to the whole church. Amen. Amen, I just want to stand and thank God since Mike passed away. He's my everything. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He's gave me that peace that passes all understanding. He's always there. Like Bubba says, there's a lot of things we don't understand. But I just want to praise him, thank him for his mercy, his grace, his love, his keeping power. And for my children and my grandchildren, they're all real good to me. And I just thank God and I love him. He's my everything. And I give him all the glory. For it's in his name I, I thank him in the mighty name of Jesus. He's an awesome God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Real quick, uh, before, just got an update from uh, Preacher Mike. Um, and uh, he said, just an update, run more tests, but so far, heart looking good. Going to check a few more things. His blood pressure was elevated this morning, which can be understandable. Uh, he said, keep the prayers going, that all is good, just still hurting a little bit in his chest and back. Um, and then he said, <laughs> tell all the church family I'm sorry for not being there, and I'm missing them. And uh, so he said he may end up ha having to do a heart cath, but they're still trying to decide. But that's just kind of a quick update, and he was going to CT. And, uh, but let's pray for the pastor um, that everything will be all right. Um, I'm be honest with you, I told Chuck earlier, I said I wouldn't be surprised if he wouldn't bust the doors open before the service is over with, if he could break out from out there. But uh, just want to give kind of a quick update on that. So, well, I, did, I apologize. I thought he went for his looks, not his heart. <laughs> but he's been doing all that cutting on him. I thought that's what, no. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Hey, don't, don't be ashamed. Don't be scared. Yes, sir. You know, you're, you're, in, you're in God's house. He's the only one you need to talk to. We'll listen, though. I apologize. You have to hear from two Castillos in one day. <laughs> you sound a lot alike. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself to you. My name is Tony Castillo. I've been coming here on and off for the past weeks with my son, Noah, and my other son, Daniel. And we were looking for a home where we could be spiritually fed and come and feel the presence of the Lord. And when we heard uh, you talk about family, the pastor talked the other day about family and really stepping up to the plate, coming to Sunday services, coming to Wednesday services. I'm like, this is this is a good place to be. You know, uh, if I could just share a little bit with you, um, the words stand firm, it's in the Bible. It was also a term that the British used during World War II. Stand firm. You stand firm in Christ, you will find that he is true. Uh, my family and I have been going through, well, we went through a real difficult, difficult period. I was living in England. I was working at the embassy in London. I had my dream job cocktail parties, you know, all of the mingling, working with, you know, dignitaries, heads of state, that kind of thing. It was really what I really wanted to do. And then uh, 
I got uh, I got punched in the chest uh, to make uh, not to get into too many details. I found out my wife had no longer a use for me. And uh, the thing is, I never blamed God. And, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm great. I just knew the Lord has a purpose for everything. So I tried. I did what the Lord says you should do. I tried to reconcile the marriage. I'd bring her roses home. When I come home from the embassy, I'd bring her roses. I'd write scripture and leave it on the coffee table. And I'd tell her to her face. I said, I begged her. I grabbed her hands and I said, please stop hurting me, please. And I would cry in front of her. And she'd just look at me like, God, get away from me. Why? You know, this is embarrassing. Why are you crying? And I realized, and finally I got her to admit it. I met her uh, at church, Baptist church. I got her to admit, I didn't, not coercion, but she said, I never really bought into the scripture. I never really bought into what was being said. And uh, that made it easier for me to understand why she was hurting me this way. Because we got married in the church. We got married, uh, we were both, both believers, so I thought. But also that God is good. If God puts you through trials and tribulations, it's to bring you closer to him. When you fall away, it, did you really believe? You know what I mean? He says we must stand trials. But he brings us closer and he brings us to a better place at the end, like my brother said here. You know what I mean? He's te not testing you, but he's putting you through the paces because he wants better things for you. And I know that the Lord hates divorce, and I hated that. But I knew I had no other choice but to move from England back here to home, North Carolina, and get divorced. And I said, God hates this. But also I realized the Lord has something better for me. And I'm not saying, you know, boom, I'm going to get another wife or anything like that. I'm saying he's got peace for me. The Lord had mercy, such mercy upon me that he said, son, I'm going to take you away from this situation. And I'm going to give you that peace that transcends all understanding. I'm going to give you that peace because I love you. And it's going to feel terrible because there's going to be times when you want to go and you're going to want to lie down and you're going to want to die. And there's going to be times when you're going to say, well, maybe I should go out there and find another wife. But the Lord says, stand firm. Be patient because I will deliver you and I will give you the desires of your heart. So for me, the desires of my heart to see all my children in heaven. So I said, Lord, okay, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking for anything, Lord, but that peace that transcends understanding and a good church home. And I just want to tell you how impressed I am with this church. Uh, we've been going to trying different places. We've been here for two years, and we just really we feel welcome here. You all are very loving and very kind to us. And like my brother said, that means the world. I went to a Southern Baptist church when I was the first a believer, and uh, I went, I will go, I'll go talk to the pastor. That's the man to talk to. I said, Pastor, I want to be involved with the church. He goes, well, we got uh, dinner Friday, but there's no more tickets. Uh, we don't have any more room. And I was like, okay, um, Pastor, I'm new to this, but I'd like to be involved with youth. I'd like to volunteer for the youth programs. Well, we're full up on that, too. And I had to realize that he, the guy didn't want me there. He didn't want me there. I don't know why. Maybe he was intimidated with my good looks. I don't know what it was. <laughs> But if I had not been that believer, if I had not had that foundation of Christ, I would have said, oh, these Christians, this is what it's about. You know what I mean? And like my brother said, there's people who are going to walk in this door and they may be on their last legs. So I don't know if you all ever heard of the Gideons. I used to be a Gideon. And we put the Bibles in the hotels. You know why we put Bibles in hotels? Because that's where people go to commit suicide. And we get testimonies from people who found that one Bible and opened it up there on their last leg, and they heard the word of God. So it's very important, like I said, to be nice to people, okay? Even if you're a Duke or Carolina fan, because I went to NC State. So you got to be nice to me, no matter what you, who you support. Thank you. Thank you. But I just want to thank you all and say how loving and kind you are. And it's good to be in a southern church a country church. I really, of all the places I've been, this is home, you know. I may not have the accent, but I, I, am, I am Southern through and through, and there's no doubt about that. So thank you all, and I look forward to getting to know you all, and I, get, I look forward to being part of the family. So thank you so much for your hospitality. Robert, I don't know if we have, how much time we got. You want to do a song? Or? Anybody else?
going to. God called me to the ministry many, many years ago. As you can tell, I'm old enough to carry it. <laughs> and uh, grew up in Kentucky, place of all places. One day, my wife and I were there, and I woke up in the morning, and I had a pain. And I knew it was heart. This was in 1995. I said to her, I think you better take me over to the VA. And she did. And they said, well, we'll have to find a doctor to come check you out. They set me on a bed or a cot, and I laid there. Finally, he came to me. I prayed this prayer. God, I don't know where this is going, but I want your godliest people around me. My wife tapped me on the shoulder and said, open your eyes and look, you'll love it. This doctor had just showed up, and across his chest here was this sign that said, I love Jesus. Well, they did all this te te testing and testing and testing. I woke up a few days later. I was on the fifth floor where they have all these patients, these heart patients. I was lying there in this big cot or bed and had a beautiful nurse sitting in a chair off the end of the thing. And she wasn't looking around, but I finally said to her, I said, are you an angel? And she said, not yet. <laughs> and so we talked. I had been there already two days. They'd done not six-way bypass, but two ways. They always advertise it. We're going to do six ways. Why do they always want to say, I'll do a six-way on you? And it winds up something else. Well, she and I talked, and she said something. She said, you must be awfully important. She said, God really had us praying for you. I said, us? She said, all your nurses. They said that same thing. Why would they say that thing? How did, you know, he must be awfully important. So God's really had us praying for him. And she said, you got three more nurses coming that way. And she said, oh, you remember when you were in the cath lab and they had two black nurses down there? I said, yeah, I remember them. They never come up here to the fifth floor. They came up here, and they spoke the same thing. He must be awfully important. I said, God's really had us praying for him. Nine nurses. Now, my wife's in the medical field, and she couldn't believe all of this. Finally, they put me down on the lower floor, and she came around to see me, and doctors came in, and and they would say for the same thing. He must be awfully important. God's really had us praying for him. And it went on and on and on. Well, you know what I did? Everybody I heard about that was sick or going to be sick, if you're going to a doctor, pray this prayer, God. I don't know where this is going, but I want your godliest people around me. And there are, and I have them, hundreds and hundreds of stories that people told me they prayed that prayer. One of my best friends about two and a half years ago, he and I have traveled and preached a lot. He called me up one morning. He said, Garland, Garland, I'm in the St. Joseph Hospital at Lexington. And they say they got to do six-way bypass on me, always six-way. I want you to pray that prayer that you prayed for yourself. 
I said, okay. So I prayed that prayer. Didn't hear from him again for about six or seven weeks. He had had the operation two, two-way bypass. And he said, let me tell you the story. Before anything ever happened, the surgeon came to see me. And he says, he didn't want to talk about my heart or condition or anything. He wanted to pray for me. Twice this happened. Twice. Two doctors came and did the same thing. Three nurses came and did the same thing. We didn't advertise it or anything. Just because we prayed that prayer, God, don't know where this is going, but we want your godliest people around me. And I have got unbelievable numbers of those stories right now. Before it happens, before anything happens, God, I don't know where this is going, but I want your godliest people around me. And it just keeps on and on and on. <clears throat> Nine years later, I had a heart attack here. I had to go down to the hospital. And I prayed that prayer. And I left a message with the nurse the night before when I went into the hospital. Uh, I would like to see the surgeon. And he comes in and he says, uh, I got a note here to come see you. And uh, I said, he said, how can I help? I said, we need to pray. He said, you want me to pray? I said, can you pray? I didn't know anything about him. And I'm going to tell you what, he prayed. And it was obvious that he knew how to pray. When he finished, he said, I'll see you in the morning, I guess. I said, well, we've got to pray first about something. He said, what? I said, i got to pray about you. He said, pray about me? There's nothing wrong with me. I said, the Holy Spirit told me this about you, that your wife had run off with that proverbial trumpet player from Philly three months ago, and your heart is broken it is worse in worse shape than mine. And he wept and he wept and he wept. We went again. Had two way bypass. I was over that and started back traveling again for the Lord. But I didn't I didn't last long. You wonder, what is God gonna do? Yeah, my Lord send me. That's what Isaiah prayed one time. What am I going to do? God's just waiting on your voluntary work. Here am I, Lord. Send me. And I have many healing testimonies, personal. And I just want you to remember that. That God's waiting on you. Don't fall down. You say, God, here am I. Close here in just a second. I, I love this. This is great. And I want to close in prayer. I'm going to have an altar call because I don't want no one leaving here. If you got any problems, burdens, don't don't come in that door the same way. Don't leave the same way you came. Leave it at his feet. God can take care of it. We can't. We can't do it. We can't do it. And we know he can because we've got an awesome God. Like, like what I was saying, it's hard to believe he can keep up with each and every one of us, and not just us, but everybody in the world. 
So we know we got an awesome God. And I, let's pray. Dear kind, heavenly, gracious, loving, sweet Father of ours, we just thank you and praise you for letting us be here today. I just ask you that I love the testimonies we heard today, dear Heavenly Father. The man that was wanting us to pray for his father, Ray. I'll talk to you in just a minute, Lord. The, the one that prayed for his daddy to be saved, Ray, just, I just ask you to touch his heart, dear Heavenly Father, the next time he mentions it to him, that it's going to touch him and want him to come to the Lord. He wants to be saved, dear Heavenly Father, because he's got to want it. You can't push it on nobody. And dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you to touch Renee's son, dear Heavenly Father, that maybe he'll get transferred to North Carolina, dear Heavenly Father. He'll be spending so much time with us, she'll say, hey, ain't you got to get somewhere else? How about Virginia or to just touch that family, dear Heavenly Father, and be with our pastor, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask you just to bless and put your hand upon them, dear Heavenly Father. I know you're going to heal them, dear Heavenly Father, because you already got them in your care. And each and every person here, dear Heavenly Father, is going through something. I just ask you to touch them, bless them, heal them in a mighty way. And dear Heavenly Father, we love your grace and your mercy and your love you give us each and every day. And dear Heavenly Father, if someone's got a, a burden or a problem, just let them come to this altar, dear Heavenly Father, and leave it at your feet. Give it to you, dear Heavenly Father, because it is too big for us. And we're going to give you praise, honor, and glory for everything said and done. Most of all, your son, the sacrifice he made for us. He didn't have to go, dear Heavenly Father, but he did because he loved us. And I thank you and I praise you for shedding that blood to cover my sin. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, um, he wants us to do an altar call song, but I want us to stand up and just give God praise this morning before we do that. We got a lot to praise him for this morning. We got good news from the pastor about the pastor this morning. I believe he's going to be in good shape, don't you? So uh, let's do that song, He Set Me Free. Amen. Has he set you free? Man, that was weak. Has he set you free? All right, here we go. Brother, I'm right in agreement with you, but he took away 95% of my vocabulary. I used to play at juke joints before I was 19 years old. Yeah. 
But when it comes in your heart, he changes your song. I no, long, I no longer give the devil praise. I give God praise. And I encourage. You know, last night we were at a, um, youth, explosion. We're at a youth explosion. And you just would not believe the young people that were there. Those kids are hungry. I want to raise, I want to see young people raise their hands in this church. All the young people, where are they at? There they are, right, John. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's not the future church, folks. That's the present church. Amen? Amen. Give them a hand clap of praise on that. <laughs> Amen. Three girls gave their life to the Lord last night. They sure did. So, uh, if the, whatever the media says, there's hope for this country. We are raising some strong youth. We are raising a remnant within the youth today, as well as in the older generation. So I give God praise that tonight. She's going to do this altar call for you. If anybody has a need this morning, right here it is. Come to the altar. These brothers will pray with you. Amen.
I just got a message from uh, Karen, preacher's wife, and uh, so they are keeping Mike uh, just like overnight for uh, observation type stuff, and um, of course then they're going to kind of go from there, and the next step would possibly be like a heart catheterization, they don't know for sure yet, but she said just keep him in their prayers, and uh, that they, they ordered, was going to admit him for observation, um, which is kind of the protocol type thing for that, so uh, but just continue remember the preacher, uh, Miss Karen, and all of them, and uh, hope that everything will uh, be fine. He won't have to have a catheterization. So, uh, just uh, like I said, just thank y'all for the wonderful service that we had today, and uh, and uh, we just uh, lift up uh, not only just our pastor, but all of the ones that are sick and afflicted around about us. So, um, yeah. far as I know, yes, services tonight. Um, I would say, um, I think for the youth tonight. That if, if um, I don't think Robbie's going to be here tonight, and I was supposed to take the youth tonight, uh, but I have another engagement that I have to be at tonight for my Uncle Don. I know y'all y'all heard me talk about our, my Uncle Don and stuff. Um, you know, he's very sick and stuff, but uh, we're having a surprise birthday type thing for him, so I'm not going to be here. So if all the youth that will be here tonight, if you could come in to the sanctuary tonight, um, because I wasn't able to get anybody else to to uh, take the youth tonight, so um, I apologize for that. But um, I just want to let everybody know. But service tonight, far as I know, is still on go. So all hearts and mind clear. I hope everybody got a blessing today. I mean, it's a little different than normal, but it wasn't different to the Lord because He wants to hear eat for something from each and every one of us anyway. And uh, all right, Marty, if you don't mind closing. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord of Lord and King of Kings, Father, we just thank you so much for, for this day, Lord, this, this beautiful day you've given us, Father. We just ask you, Lord, uh, if you would, to touch Mike, Father, and uh, help him, Lord, just to get through this thing, Lord. And uh, he has faith, Lord. I know he has faith, Lord. You're going to touch him. You're going to heal him, Lord. He's going to come out of this thing uh, smelling like a rose, Father. And I just ask you, Lord, that we all give you our troubles, Lord, and our burdens, and just lay them at the altar and, and let you handle these things, Lord. You said you'd fight our battles for us. We don't have to fight our battles. And, Father, we just we love you, and we thank you, Lord, for this good crowd here today and all these awesome testimonies we had and the beautiful music. And, uh, Father, just let us know, just let everybody here know, Lord, this is a family. We're not just people here. We're, we're a family, Lord, and we're, we're going to be with each other forever. So uh, we might as well start liking each other while we're here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Lord, I love you, and I thank you for everything you've done for me. And uh, I just ask you to bring us all back here tonight, Lord, and, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, all that you do. All these things we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.